stones over ancient boulders. Sharp edges, peaks, and ridges fill the rugged, dry, and sparse terrain. She ventures out to pick berries with her woven birch bark basket in hand. A large raven squawks and swoops down low in front of her. From the corner of her eye, she sees a small light on the ground. A quick shimmer that bounces in the reflection of the misty golden sun. She hobbles to the source of the shiny object and sifts through the moss and lichen that sticks to the cold gray slate to find it. Once found, she picks up the gold nugget, bringing it close to her face to view it fully. But it sparkles so brightly that she is taken aback and drops it in fear. She brings the golden rock back to the headman to show him what she has found. He asks her for answers. She covers the rock with both of her hands. Prospectors arrive and try to make trade. The leader of the crew spies a shiny object in the headman's hand. The headman hides the knife behind his back, but the captain of the crew has already seen it and points at it. The headman clenches his jaw and hesitantly hands the knife over as the others crowd around. The captain holds out a bag filled with guns and ammunition in exchange for the gold. But the headman stands his ground and shakes his head, taking the knife back with authority. The captain puts his hands up and backs away slowly. Back in the south, the captain meets with lawmakers, and when he returns north, he holds up a piece of paper. He stakes a claim into the ground with a shovel, and a mine is built. The mine soon produces deathly contaminants that leak into the air and water. The captain is aware of the pollution, but still he pours gold from deep underground. The people in the community close their doors and windows when they see birds fall dead in mid-flight. And one day, a small child is playing on the banks of the river, dipping his toes in the water. When his mother sees this, she quickly pulls him away from the shoreline. But it's too late. The child passes away in the night. The child's parents go to the authorities, but they are turned away and their cries ignored. A young, rich woman in the town picks fruits and vegetables from her garden and serves them for dinner. She dies in her sleep. The scientist is then brought in to test the garden soil and tells the townspeople of the extremely high levels of contamination. The leak of contaminants cause panic on the townspeople. They scatter and run. They put up for sale signs on their front lawns. The town falls silent. The mine takes on a life of its own. It spills out onto the land and into the water, slithering like a snake and killing everything in its path until it reaches the ocean. Riders burn down the unsightly head frame in the night. The captain steps off a train somewhere in the south and grips his heart. Looters find his dead body along the train tracks. They rob him for what he's worth. The gold nugget that he had gripped so tightly in his fist now rolls onto the ground and out of his lifeless hand.